It's been almost six months since the passage of Hurricane Elsa, and for most Barbadians, life has returned to normal. But for dozens of others, it hasn't, and they're finding themselves in places like this, the Frank Walcott Labour College, which is currently being used as a shelter. And it seems that many of those persons will find themselves in that position over the holiday season as they await assistance from government with housing repairs and new homes. State agencies are providing meals, vouchers, toiletries and other necessities to the residents who, to a large extent, are unemployed. Housing officials say there's no telling how long they'll be here. Well, we live in St. Andrew, Grace Farm, St. Andrew. Up by us, slippage. So many rain else came, the corner fell on the, on the house and the land just started to slide and go on into the gully. So when we call, we can't live there no more because every day, the land just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. So we cannot go back there. So because we cannot go back there, our house is not damaged like how the rest blow down and stuff. Always is because of the rain, land slippage. So we cannot go back there. Shanice Prescott Henry is thankful for the hospitality extended at the Labour College, where she has access to relatively comfortable facilities, the internet, and a room where her son can have online classes. Still, there's no place like home. It's for difficult you to because my son, he likes the tree and everything. I can't, I, because he says my name, my Santa Claus, I come, he ain't getting the gifts yet, because the tree up. But I can't, uh, the only thing is family. We, we, don't, we don't get to see our family and friends like one time because St. Philip to St. Andrew, that's a lot of pull and it's difficult. But we're just making it do how possible we can. We're trying to be as comfortable as possible. But as they say, uh, he is okay, but we need me and my family, we need to go. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Cynthia Ford told Barbados today that for the most part, residents are respecting the rules of the communal living arrangements. But a few have taken the goodwill for granted, engaging in disputes that in some cases have turned physical. Shelter coordinator Sonia Brown admits it has not all been smooth sailing. She believes clients and staff will need professional help so they can better cope with the emerging challenges. As I keep telling them, they don't have to be chummy chummy, don't have to be friendly, just be cordial with each other and respect each other on the compound and coexist. They would tell me, yes, they agree, and then something happens and then we back to square one. So I am trying to eliminate as much as the petty issues because I think they're, they're very small issues that I can deal with. It's just the mere fact they don't know how to deal with conflict. So the first thing would be to fly off the handle so we are back at behavioural issues and that's the main problem for this institution right now. But there are also some model residents who she can turn to for help, like Judith Phillips, a 68-year-old from Ebenezer St. Philip. From her meticulous one-bedroom studio, Phillips explains that after spending time at her daughter's house, she eventually opted to accept the government-sponsored shelter. Easy because... Sometimes, you know, you're worrying, you're studying, you know where you was, and how you is now. But it don't always be. You know, because God just throw you off sometimes, like in a mental state. But I try to keep focused because I know what is life, you know. And I pray and I ask God to help me and I try to make everything, you know, as peaceable and comfortable as I can be. You know, I won't be back there by Christmas. But I don't worry because some Christmas I stay by myself. I prepare my own meals and I stay by myself. So it don't come difficult to me. And I try to make everything clean and enjoy myself. Right? I don't worry. Dave Bryan, who lives at the shelter with his girlfriend and their four children, has received positive news for the year. Today, our beans will be casted. So things going along fairly well to me. I understand that a lot of people, over 2,000 people, who are misplaced. So it's going to take time. This isn't something that the government could just... Because I myself work in construction, so I know it's very expensive. Especially the sort of hurricane prepared houses they're trying to give us now. Um, talk, to me, talk to me about um, the difficulties of continuing to 
um, raise your family and, and to live um, away from home? Well, I ain't really facing those sort of difficulties because me and my family, we, we're a close-knit unit. So wherever we go, as long as we're together, and that's why I'm so grateful to be here. As long as we're together, everything good. Might got a little ups and downs, but I, I can keep my corner. So I ain't got no problem with nobody here. Most of the people here are nice. Admin, admin make sure they go away and beyond the means and calling of their job to help us out. So I appreciate that. There's a glimmer of hope that these displaced families could soon be in emergency homes which will be constructed by the government. Last week, Minister of Housing and Lands Dr. William Duguid confirmed that the long-awaited prefab houses from China had arrived and a work plan was already in place to kick-start the process so that as many families as possible could turn their own keys at Christmas. Kareem Smith for Barbados Today.